Hello, today I'm going to be checking out Be Quiet's brand new Dark Rock TF2, which is a high end top flow CPU cooler with a TDP of 230 watts. The cooler features a dual heatsink design with six high performance 6mm heat pipes. The cooler features a brushed aluminium top cover and very attractive black coating. It comes with two 135mm Silent Swings fans, which even at full speed are incredibly quiet at only 27.1 decibels. One of the big advantages of a top flow CPU cooler is that the design keeps the CPU cooler's height to a minimum, and the Dark Rock TF2 is only 134 millimeters tall. The Dark Rock TF2 comes with a three year warranty and is available from today, priced at 79.99 in the UK. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is show you how to install the cooler, and after that, we'll check out the cooling performance. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to install this on an AM4 socket and an AMD motherboard. If you've got an Intel motherboard, there's alternative mounting kit supplied with the cooler. So the first thing for us to do is remove these clips. Now, if you have your motherboard on a flat table, it's fine to remove both of them at once. I've got mine already installed in the case, and if I remove both these clips, the back plate is going to fall away. So I'm going to do them one at a time. So each of the clips is held on with two screws. Next, we need to put a spacer over each corner. Next, we've got this little bracket to go on. You can see on each side we've got two holes. One is labelled AM4, so we're going to go ahead and put a screw through the hole labelled AM4. Then we're going to lower the screws down through the spacers and into the back plate beneath. Now, what I have found, it is helpful if you give each of the screws a little turn to get them to catch. It means they're not going to fall out when you use the screwdriver. And then we'll go ahead and tighten them up with a screwdriver. Okay, same thing with the top clip. So these mounting brackets are new to the Dark Rock TF2. In the original Dark Rock TF, you had to use a separate back plate and it was an absolute nightmare to install. I absolutely loved the cooler, but it was my least favorite cooler to mount. These new clips are used on BeQuad's recent range of coolers and I find them to be fairly good. So already we've got a great new upgrade to this cooler. Next we can go ahead and add a pea-sized amount of thermal paste to the centre of the CPU. The thermal paste is included. Just before we install the cooler there's some plastic protection on the back that we need to remove. Then we can go ahead and line the cooler up with the bracket we've installed already. We've got some cutouts in the cooler. This is going to let you get a screwdriver into the screws down below. The next thing for us to do is install our bottom fan, and it is going to go underneath the top heat sink. Now, importantly, there are two different fans included with the cooler. They look slightly differently. This is the thinner one of the two, so it's important you install it at the bottom. The thicker fan is going to go on top of the heat sink. Now both of our fans are going to have to connect to this PWM splitter cable. I've already plugged this in at this stage to make things a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and slide the fan in underneath the heatsink. Next we've got these metal clips which are going to hold the fans onto the heatsink. So we go ahead and feed the clip through the holes in the fan. Slide the fan back in. and then we're going to secure it to the heatsink. Well, to do that, all we need to do is put a little bit of pressure here on the clip and here, and that's going to hold the fan in place. And then it's just the same thing at the top. Next, we've got our top fan. I'm just going to set that on top of the heatsink. And then again, use the metal clips through the holes in the fan to secure them to the heatsink. Again, it's just a matter of applying a little bit of pressure, and then they're going to clip into place. Same thing at the top. What I'm going to do with this cable, I'm going to take it and bring it through the heat pipes at the back up to the top of the case. At the top, I'm going to go ahead and plug it into our splitter cable. And then I'm going to take this end of the splitter cable and plug it into our CPU fan header, which is just here at the top of the motherboard. And then I'm going to tuck the excess cable in and out of the way. So I think the Dark Rock TF2 looks great in this build. I love how it doesn't completely block the RAM and you can still see it looking in from the side. I also think the all black heatsink with the Be Quiet logo looks great as well. 
Okay, so what about the temperatures? Important to mention before we start, in this system I've got a Ryzen 9 5900X, which obviously isn't the easiest CPU to cool. So our CPU idled at 33 degrees and reached a maximum of 91 degrees during the 20 minute IDA64 stability test. Take a look at the noise levels. The idle noise levels were excellent at only 30 decibels, while on the IDA64 stability test the average noise level was 50 decibels, which places it in the moderate range. So how do these temperatures compare to some of the other coolers I've used in this build? And recently I have tested two other BQuat CPU coolers, the Shadow Rock Slim 2 and also the Silent Loop 2 360mm AIO. So with the Dark Rock TF2, our CPU idled 2 degrees cooler, while there was no difference to the temperatures under the IDA64 stability test. Noise levels were the same at idle, however under the IDA64 stability test, the Dark Rock TF2 was 5 decibels louder. So I wasn't initially surprised by the extra noise levels with this cooler. The Shadow Rock Slim 2 only had one fan on the heatsink, whereas this cooler had two. What I was, however, surprised with was the temperatures, and I would have expected this cooler to give us better CPU temperatures. However, when I thought about it more, the reason for the Dark Rock TF2 not outperforming the Shadow Rock Slim 2 became clear, and it was due to the orientation of the cooler in the case. So the intake in this case, which is the Silent Base 802, is all coming from the front where we've got three 140mm fans. And when I use the Shadow Rock Slim 2, its intake fan lined up with the three intake fans at the front of the case, giving it an excellent source of cool air. However, with the Dark Rock TF2, its intake fan is lined up against the front tempered glass panel. And I think that is the reason why it didn't outperform the Shadow Rock Slim 2. So I would expect this cooler to perform best in a case with a side intake. And in fact, I did use the original version of the Dark Rock TF in Cooler Master's NR200P, which has a mesh panel on the side, and you can actually have fans in front of the mesh providing intake. And I did get very impressive CPU temperatures in that case. Comparing the temperatures to the Silent Loop 2 360mm AIO mounted at the top of the case as an exhaust, our CPU idled 1 degree hotter with the Dark Rock TF2 and was 7 degrees hotter under the IDA64 stability test. In terms of noise levels, the Dark Rock TF2 was 4 decibels quieter at idle and there was no difference to the noise levels under load. So summing up, I am impressed with the changes BQuad have made to the Dark Rock TF with the second version. In particular, I think the mounting mechanism is so much better and I think the aesthetic on the heatsink looks much better as well. I think it's also important to note that this cooler wouldn't be my first choice for this particular case. Where it would be my first choice would be in a small form factor case where its low height is going to work great and also if I had a case with a side intake it's going to work particularly well. So hopefully you found the video useful. If you have please remember to give it a thumbs up and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel please hit the subscribe button as well.